Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. The rate of reaction refers to how quickly reactants are consumed and products are formed in a chemical reaction. In simpler terms, it's a measure of how fast or slow a reaction occurs. The following factors affect the rate of reaction. Concentration of reactants in solution. Pressure of reacting gases. Surface area of solid reactants, temperature, and using a catalyst including enzymes. We'll first explore how each factor impacts the reaction rate and then analyze these effects using the principles of collision theory. Increasing the concentration of reactants in a solution leads to a higher rate of reaction. This is because higher concentrations result in more reactant particles in a given volume, increasing the frequency of collisions. This means there are more opportunities for successful collisions per unit time thereby enhancing the reaction rate. In the diagram on your right, you will notice that there is a higher concentration of reactants than in the diagram on your left. So, there are more reactant particles in the same given volume on your right. Therefore, there are more chances of a successful collision happening between the reactants on the right side. When you look at the graph for the same reaction but with a higher concentration shown by the pink line, you will notice that it starts off more steeply and levels out sooner. This shows that the rate of reaction is higher with a higher concentration of reactants in a given volume. At the end of both reactions, the amount of products made is the same, but the reaction finishes faster with a higher concentration of reactants. In reactions where reactants are gases, increasing the pressure of reacting gases leads to a higher rate of reaction. Higher pressures force gas particles closer together, increasing the frequency of collisions between them. This increased collision frequency results in a higher rate of reaction. So once again, if you observe the pink line on the graph, it has a steeper slope, indicating a higher rate of reaction. Next factor is surface area of solid reactants. Increasing the surface area of solid reactants leads to a higher rate of reaction. A greater surface area exposes more reactant particles to the other reactant, leading to more frequent collisions. This increased collision frequency enhances the reaction rate. So reducing the size of the solid reactant into smaller particles or using powdered forms increases the surface area and speeds up the reaction. If you look at the graph line for the reaction with a powdered reactant, it has a steeper gradient at the start and becomes horizontal sooner meaning it has a higher rate of reaction and the reaction finishes sooner compared to the same reaction but with bigger pieces of the reactant. Increasing the temperature leads to a higher rate of reaction as well. 
Higher temperatures provide particles with more kinetic energy, causing them to move faster and collide more frequently. Additionally, more particles possess energy greater than the activation energy, leading to more successful collisions per second and a higher reaction rate. In the graph, when you compare the same reaction at different temperatures, you'll see that at higher temperatures, the line starts steep and flattens out earlier. Using a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without being changed or consumed in the process. A catalyst increases the rate of a reaction and is unchanged at the end of a reaction. A catalyst decreases the activation energy of a reaction. The amount of catalyst remains unchanged from the beginning to the end of the reaction and it does not factor into the equation. Catalysts work by providing an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy for the reaction to occur. This allows more reactant particles to possess the required energy to react effectively increasing the reaction rate. Enzymes are biological catalysts that accelerate biochemical reactions in living organisms. They work best at particular temperature and pH ranges. Without a catalyst, the graph typically shows a higher activation energy barrier that the reactants must overcome before the reaction can proceed. This means the reaction requires more energy input to start. With a catalyst, the graph shows a lower activation energy barrier. The catalyst provides an alternate pathway for the reaction to occur which requires less energy input to start. As a result, the reaction proceeds more readily and at a faster rate. In the graph, if you compare a reaction with a catalyst to the same reaction without one, you will notice that the line representing the reaction with the catalyst starts off steeper and levels out earlier. Next, we are going to describe practical methods for investigating the rate of a reaction. To find out the rate of a reaction, we need to monitor how quickly the reactants are used up or how rapidly the products are formed. To investigate the rate of a reaction, we can employ various techniques including measuring the change in mass of a reactant or a product and measuring the amount of gas formed. The rate of reaction can be calculated by determining how much reactant was used or how much product was formed over a specific period of time. So first, measuring changes in mass of reactants or products. This method involves observing the change in mass of reactants or products over time. The reaction may be carried out in an open container placed on a scale to see how much the reactant's mass decreases. For this, we use a weighing scale to measure the mass of reactants before and after the reaction. Record the masses at regular intervals. Close the mouth of the flask with cotton wool to let the gas out but to prevent any substances spilling out. Then we can use the following equation to find the rate of reaction. Let's evaluate this method. 
Although this method is simple, this approach isn't ideal for hydrogen and other gases with a low relative formula mass because the decrease in mass might be too tiny to detect accurately. So some gases are so light that you won't even notice a change in mass. For reactions that produce gas, gas collection is essential. We may use a gas syringe connected to the reaction flask to collect the gas produced. The syringe has volume markings on it so we can identify the volume of gas produced. Record gas volume at specific intervals to determine its production or consumption rate and plot it on a graph. Time the reaction with a stopwatch to track gas production duration. Ensure equipment is airtight to prevent measurement inaccuracies. The rate of reaction is calculated by dividing gas volume by time. For instance, divide the gas volume by the time taken to collect it to find the rate at that specific time. Collecting gas using a gas syringe is a reliable method because it provides accurate and precise measurements of gas volume since the markings on the syringe allow for easy reading of the gas volume. All the gas is efficiently collected from the reaction. However, the capacity of the syringe may limit the amount of gas that can be collected, making it less suitable for reactions with high gas production rates. Careful handling is necessary to maintain airtight conditions and the syringe's relatively higher cost may be a consideration. Alternatively, gas collection using an inverted measuring cylinder is feasible. However, it may not be suitable for reactions that generate large amounts of gas rapidly as it can result in overflow and inaccuracies. Careful handling is required to keep the cylinder inverted without gas leaks. Finally, let's take a look at how we can interpret data from rate of reaction experiments. In rate of reaction experiments, we analyze data by drawing graphs. These graphs help us see how the reaction rate changes over time or with different conditions. Usually, the reaction starts fast and slows down as the reactants are used up. The graph line becomes less steep and eventually flat when the reaction finishes. Graphs can look different based on factors like reactant amount, temperature or catalyst presence. Comparing graphs help us see how these factors affect the reaction rate. Here's an example of a graph we may plot from the data of a rate of reaction experiment. The steepness of the curve in a reaction graph shows how fast the reaction is. Initially, when there's a lot of reactant, the curve is steep. But it gets less steep as the reactant is used up, showing that the reaction rate decreases. When there is no more reactant left, the reaction stops and the curve becomes flat. Drawing lines on the graph helps us see how fast the reaction is going at different times. And as we learned earlier, if we increase any of the factors affecting reaction rates, such as concentration or temperature, then the rate of reaction will be greater and the initial gradient will be steeper than the original reaction. That concludes part 2 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? 
Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye.